Hey guys, today I'm really excited to uh, review the new Phoenix headlight. I got the HP 30R V2, so it's the second version of this light. Uh, they say it's a ultra high performance separate search and rescue headlamp with a rotary switch, charging and discharging, so you can use the battery pack as a power bank or uh, as the energy supply for the light. They have a limited warranty uh, and five years uh, free repair so uh, that's a really nice quality item they sell here. 3000 lumens, 120 hours maximum runtime and it is fueled by two 21700 batteries that are included in this uh, package. So it's a real nice cardboard boxing with uh, lots of information outside uh, they say that they have uh, one x hp 50 white light led uh, that's the center light for long beam distance and then they have two xp g3 s4 neutral white uh, leds that's the two on the sides for the uh, floodlight and then two 5000 milliamp batteries that are included so we get really nice runtime with it and then of course the different modes but that we will have a look later on impact resistance to drops of height from two meters and waterproof according to ip66 standard so let's open the box up we have a Manual, warranty card, spare o-ring, probably for the battery pack. And here we have the battery pack with a note that you should remove the battery protection first. Here we have battery cage. This you can attach to your belt if you want to use the light uh, with the battery pack on the belt instead of the helmet you can just slide it in and out and then double protection battery case this is made out of plastic we have here the indicator that is not working since the battery protection is still in so flip it open remove the two battery protections here we have a nice view on the 5000 milliamp 21700 batteries protected cells so really good quality batteries i really like the phoenix batteries they uh, always have great runtime so big fan of that and then we have the huge headlamp itself really nice deep reflector so we are going to get a decent throw out of this uh, HP 50 and then frosted lenses for the or honeycomb lenses for the two floodlights so that we get a really nice beam it's a good quality head strap there's some nice silicon inside so if you put it on a helmet it will not uh, slip away and then here we have a tissue protected cable and then we can just slide the battery pack on clicks in connect it and then we have the uh, extension cable if you want to use the battery pack on the belt USB-C charging cable and then extra clips if you want to attach it to another helmet uh, or whatsoever so you can uh, really attach it everywhere so you have four clips so that's plenty 
So you take the packaging aside and we are going to have a closer look at the light. So now I can show you the battery indication. So we have 50% left and then sturdy cover to protect the USB and USB-C. So the USB-C is for charging and the normal USB is if you want to use the battery pack as a power bank if you want to charge your phone or other USB powered devices. The housing is made of aluminium, so that's really good. It has a decent size, so uh, I don't think that uh, we are going to have any problems with uh, heat building up in the head, because often all these other headlights are smaller and then they overheat fast and need to dim down. On the side you have the rotary switch that I really like. It's a really cool uh, user interface. You need to turn it clockwise to activate the spotlight where you have one, two, three, four different output modes. And if you turn counterclockwise, you activate the two float lights. And here you have one, two, three modes. And what's pretty cool, you can also activate all the lights together. And therefore, you have a little switch on the rotary knob. So turn it on, push the button, and then you have the extra lights. And then it dims or it cycles through all the different modes. It also works if you first have the flood lights activated, one push, and then you can activate the throw or spot LED. So really nice user interface. I'm really looking forward to test this uh, nice headlight underground. Um, I think for my um, adventures it will be really nice because you don't need to find a button, you just turn the knob and uh, or the rotary switch and you can activate the light. I would have preferred a neutral white LED inside the spot LED, but uh, with the cool white we will probably get a little bit more throw, so that's why they opted for a cool one. Another feature I would uh, really like is a moon mode because we don't have a real moon mode it's uh, still a nice low mode but uh, no moon mode and maybe the option to have a red light so if you need uh, to sneak somewhere in or to preserve the uh, night vision then red light is always really nice so let's have a closer look at the different output modes and the run times so I'm using the box because here it's uh, better illustrated. So we have uh, the spotlight, the float light and the two combined. So the two combined we get the 3000 lumens for 5 hours and we have a throw distance of 270 meters. And then the float light mode in the maximum has 1000 lumen in the low 50 lumen, so there they could add a 1 lumen or 0 0.5 lumen moon mode, that would be really nice. It would also be cool if the rotary switch would uh, uh, step less dim, but uh, this is already really cool. So you don't have uh, 2000 modes to cycle through and uh, it's uh, easily accessible. And then the turbo on the spotlight has 2000 lumens and here they have uh, little star that the turbo output is measured in total of runtime including output at reduced levels due to temperature or protection mechanism in the design. So it has probably an overheating uh, protection but I will uh, test it in my Ulbricht ball and tell you how bright it really is. And we will later uh, head outside and see what it performs in the forest. I will now show you the charging function of my big power bank here. Mm. 
I can just plug it in and then you will see that the lights are blinking and once the battery is full or the batteries more to say uh, the blue lights will stay on so I will completely charge it up now test it in my Ulbricht ball and then we are heading outside and I uh, will compare it to different flashlights so I'm showing you with which lights we are going to compare because in the dark you won't see uh, the different headlights so with the Ace Beam H30 which is also one of my all-time favorite headlights also powered by a 21700 so uh, really excited to see how they uh, compete against each other against the brand new DW4 from Emisa, which is a nice uh, headlight as well really nice light color you can choose from a great variety of uh, LEDs to put in this light and then we also have the army tech wizard c2 pro max also powered by 121700 so we are going to compare a few very high output headlights and uh, really curious how the hp 30 rv 2 is going to perform so see you outside guys so guys here we are outside with the phoenix it is quite windy i hope the sound is going to turn out uh, loud and clear um, i hope it's not starting to rain anytime soon so i need to hurry up a little bit i'm here in the floodlight mode uh, which um, they indicate with uh, 2000 lumen i measured 2300 lumen so that's uh, really nice and we have a really nice beam distance uh, it's really throwing a lot of uh, light I will dim down to the high mode and then medium and low and now I will turn on the floodlight in low in medium and in high this one is indicated with 1000 lumen uh, in the manual I measured 850 but uh, I must say due to the shape of the light it's not possible for me to shine uh, completely in the middle of my Ulbricht ball so it's possible that the result is uh, slightly wrong because Phoenix is normally always very accurate with their uh, lumen indication now I will activate the spotlight so now we are spotlight on high and the floodlight on high if however I go to the brightest mode now the turbo mode on the floodlight now on the spotlight and I activate the flood then you can see that it is a little bit brighter so with this setting normally you should have plenty of light uh, for all your activities that you do and uh, due to the big size of the of the hat uh, the light is not getting very warm so it uh, may have less output than lots of other lights that I showed you today but it has uh, a much more constant output so that's what I really like so you don't uh, have a 5000 lumen mode for 30 seconds and then it dims down because if you have real 3000 lumen that are available that's always a really nice feature so overall I am again really satisfied with the new Phoenix product uh, Phoenix is one of my favorite brands so they did a really good job here and I hope that maybe in a future iteration they also bring one out with uh, red light and maybe stepless dimming uh, and maybe also the possibility to have a neutral or warm light in the uh, spot mode. So uh, I will now switch over to the Ace Beam H30 which I measured in my Ulbricht ball with 3500 lumen. It is also very bright, really nice neutral 
white beam but you can see that there's a huge difference uh, in the beam distance huh? I turn on the Phoenix once again so really big difference we will now have a look at the DW4 which I only measured with 1500 lumen but it's the Nichia LED which produces in my eyes the nicest light ever especially for photography um, also really nice beam pattern but again not the distance of the Phoenix here we have the Armitag Wizard C2 Pro Max which is indicated with 4000 lumen I measured 3700 lumen in my Ulbricht ball also producing a really nice beam but again not the beam distance that we get with the Phoenix so I really hope you like this video review if so please make sure to leave a thumbs up and uh, follow my channel and if you have any questions don't hesitate to put them in the comment section see you soon guys bye bye